as Laura said too, 20 years old, it's kind of unbelievable. Um, but it's, it's cool because it's a book that has, I believe, stayed around for so long because it's a theme that so many people can relate to. Um, and just like Rocky was saying, I wanted to create a book where I depicted a girl of color, an African American girl, um, talking about an experience that's not just particular to her, but in her own experience, in her own culture, but that was also really fun and joyful and that didn't like have a whole lot of messaging to it, but it's really about imagination and, and creativity. So that was the inspiration. And also, my mom, who was here today, um, we used to play this game where she would as you comb my hair, she would pretend like there are people who lived in my hair. And so as we went around and um, she combed my hair and worked through the tangles, we would make up these stories and adventures about the people who were living in my hair. So the people didn't make it in here. They still live in my hair now. Um, so I'll just read this one. But I have a question for you. How many people here love to get their hair combed? You love to get your hair combed? Oh my god. It's the worst. Oh yeah. my god. How many people don't really like getting their hair combed? <laughs> How many people just don't care? <laughs> Do you like it? Well, we see who raised it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this is a story about a little girl who doesn't always like getting her hair combed. Every night before I go to bed, Mama combs my hair. I sit between her knees, resting my elbows on her thighs like pillows. Mama is always gentle. She rubs coconut oil along my scalp and slowly pulls the comb through my hair. But sometimes it still hurts. Does she look happy there? <laughs> no. She's just sexy, just like Zoe. When Mama gets to especially tangled places, I try my hardest not to cry sucking in my breath and pressing my hands together until they're red. Can anybody make a face that looks like hers? Yeah, that's a good one. Awesome. It looks like I'm trying But a few to tears always manage to squeeze out. Mama, stop, I cry when I can't stand the comb tugging at my hair any longer. So the really cool thing about books is that you can see an illustration or you can hear a story and you can bring your own ideas to that story. So one time I read this and a little boy said, if you turn this upside down, this looks like a volcano hairstyle. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah. I want him to write that story about someone with a volcano hairstyle. <laughs> Mama puts the comb down and rubs my hurting places. Then she leans in close to me like she has a big secret to tell. Do you know why you're so lucky to have this head of hair, Kiana, she asks. And I shake my head no. Because it's beautiful, and you can wear it in any style you choose. I can spin your hair into fine, soft yarn, just like our grandmothers did at their spinning wheels, and weave it into a puffy little bun. Does anybody know a story about spinning wheels, or that has spinning wheels in it. Can you want to think of one? Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times when authors are getting their inspiration for their own stories, they look at other stories. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a spinning wheel in a story? <laughs> or I can part your hair into straight lines and plant rows of braids along your scalp, the way we plant seeds in our garden, then wait and watch for them to grow. I think this is one of my favorite illustrations of this book. I love her little eyes just peeking up. She's like, hello. In the morning before we walk to the store, Mama adds colorful beads to the ends of my braids. The beads click to the rhythm of my walk, helping me remember what we're going to buy. Tap, tap, clicky, clacky, milk, bread, peanut butter. <laughs> Folks on the street look at me and smile as I dance along to the tap, tap, clicky, clacky music my hair makes just for me. These kind of beads are really cool, or sometimes if you have barrettes in your hair, it's almost like you do have your own musical instrument, like when you're walking, you can hear these little clickety-clack sounds. It's pretty
pretty cool. Some days I just let my hair be free to do what it wants, to go any which way it pleases. Then my hair surrounds my head like a globe. This is my Afro style. So why do you think she said her Afro, which is round, is like a globe? What's the shape of a globe? Yeah, it's like a sphere. So she's making that comparison. Anything else? What else is round? What else could you compare? As round as, what's some other round thing? Tomato. A moon, yeah. And I see another round thing next to it. A balloon. Once when I wore my afro, the kids at school teased me. My head felt heavy and I let it hang down low. But my teacher made me feel better. She said that when she was growing up, folks counted their hair as a blessing. Wearing an afro was a way for them to stand up for what they believed, to let the world know that they were proud of who they were and where they came from. And I think a lot of us up here have read books that really talk about learning how to appreciate where you come from, wherever that is, and all of the things that are unique about who you are. I love my hair because it is thick as a forest, soft as cotton candy, and curly as a vine winding upward, reaching the sky and climbing toward outer space. Today I'm wearing it in my favorite style of all, two ponytails that stick out on either side of my head and flap in the air like a pair of wings. One of these days, I just might take off and fly. So the illustrator, he works with photographs, so he sets everything up, then he takes a picture, and then he paints. So he actually had this little girl, like, suspended in the air. I would have loved to have seen that. Right? She actually was flying when he took this. Wow. So, yeah. 